Good morning everyone, my name is Darshan Santan and in this video we're going to be talking about functions. Now, I know this is a little bit off topic but I felt that sometimes when we're in the midst of all this like algebra and like finding transformations of graphs, finding domains and just finding zeros and like simplifying equations, we often get lost in all this stuff and we sort of forget what we're essentially dealing with here and that is functions. So everything you will learn, pretty much everything you learn in algebra and pre-calculus is something to do with functions. And if you understand what a function is, only then can you sort of truly appreciate what you're doing with all that stuff. So if you, even, it's easy to get lost in like memorizing domains and ranges and just sort of forgetting what you're essentially doing. So in this video, I'm just going to hopefully try to remind you of that. Or if you're like completely new to algebra, I hope to just like give you a good introduction to what functions are. Okay. All right, let's get started. So what are functions? Let's start right there. What is a function? Well, a function is something that describes a relationship. Just like anything else, a function describes a relationship between two things. So an example using a little using slightly more unorthodox terms is that your maternal grandmom is your mom's mom. Pretty simple. So for any given person, if they wanted to find their maternal grandmom, all they do is they take their mom and find their mom. So the relationship between mother and grandmother is that the grandmother is mother's mother. That's the relationship between mother and grandmother. Okay, And that is kind of like a function. So for any given mother, if they want to find their grandmother, all they have to do is take their own mother. Like that. That's how it works. That's how it kind of works. Okay, But instead of dealing with moms and grandmoms, we'll deal with the mathematical relationships between two variables x and y. Now don't get scared, x and y are just sort of placeholders. So I'll just show you how these sort of look in just a second. So for example, you may see y is equal to x plus 4. So all this is saying is that for every value y, you just take an x, the, the relationship rather between x and y is that y is equal to any given x value plus 4. Okay, that's all this is saying. Okay, so but keep in mind though that by definition a function can have <coughs> only one output for every given input. So keep that in mind, okay? So this is really important. So for example, for a <coughs> in the relationship between mom and grandmom, like one given mom cannot have two grandmoms, right? That would not work, of course, unless they were unorthodox situations. But for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to go into those. So in general terms, a mom can't have two different grandmoms, right? That would kind of go against the definition. It would be a little bit unorthodox. It would be awkward. So that's basically the same way this works. For any given x value, you can't have two y values. So to put this into mathematical perspective, let's look at this. Now, if I if I plugged it, if I took this function when x is equal to three, okay, and this would be y is equal to three plus four equals seven, right? Now, so seven is the only output I can have when x is equal to three. Now, what I cannot have is I cannot have y is equal to seven and twenty-seven. If I have two answers for one x value, that is not a function because that's that's not really a relationship a, a really it's kind of I don't know how to describe this but it's just mathematically incorrect so that's you will see stuff like that but it won't be a function that's it okay so now let's look at an, a quick example here so let's consider the function f of x is equal to x plus one and I think I forgot to mention this but f of x is the same thing as y Okay, these two are the same thing, okay? Just keep that in mind. The only difference is that y is just basically a lot simpler to use because it's just, you know, y. And f of x is just a little bit more specific. It's saying that the function of x. So for this given function of x, if I were to, for, any, for this given function, if I had x as my, if I had plugged in an x, I would get x plus one as my result. That's basically what this is saying. But it's not really, you don't really need to worry about this until you get to pre-calculus and calculus. Once you get to calculus, you will see this a lot more. But if you're in just intermediate algebra or algebra 2, 
you're fine just knowing why. But I just want all the same. I wanted to expose you to both kinds in this video, just so you get a feel of what it is. Okay. So let's try and describe the relationship here. So if f of x is equal to x plus one, let's sort of put this in visual form. So if you, if we take some x value, any this could be any x value, and we added one to it, we get f of x. That's all this is saying. Okay. That's basically all this is saying. Now, what if we were to plug in a whole bunch of x values in here, like a whole bunch of values in for x, and add one to them and get a whole bunch of different f of x's? What would happen then? Well, we get a little table like this. So if we plug in zero, we get one, one, two, two, three, three, four. Again, these just these are just like products of this relationship here. So, so for so for any for all these given x values, these are the f of x values that you get. Okay, that's it. So we can also put if we took all these points, all these values, and we put them on a graph like this. This is what you get. Okay. So we could take all these and just like plot them as points here. So we call this the x-axis and the y-axis. So we could just plot these as different points here. So if x is 0, then y will be 1. x is 1, y is going to be 2, and so on and so forth. We can get a bunch of points like this, and then we can all we can sort of connect the dots. And if we actually do this, we get a straight line. And because we get a straight line, we call this function linear. Now there are times when it won't be linear. So for example, you might get like something like this, or like this the points will look like this and those will be different types of functions so there's linear quadratic and a whole bunch and I'm just gonna show you a couple of different functions in the next slide right here so here here's some different types of graphs so this is basically the function y equals x and as you can see because it's a line this would be a linear function now, this is a slightly more complicated linear function it's y is equal to negative 3 times x minus 4 so this also gives you a linear relationship. This also because it gives you a line. This is also linear, but it's just a little bit more complicating. Okay. Now what about this? This doesn't look like a line. It looks sort of like a U here. It's called a parabola, but it looks like a U here. And this is because it's, and this is what we call a quadratic. Okay. A quadratic looks something like this. And last but not least, we have y is equal to the sine of x. Okay, and this is a trigonometric function. It's something you will see a lot later in your pre-calculus life. And this basically goes in waves, and we call this sinusoidal. A sinusoidal function, meaning that it goes. I don't know if that's the right spelling or not, but it goes like this. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. It sort of oscillates between these two points. These. It oscillates between up here and down here. Okay, so these are just some different types of functions. There are a lot more. There's like square root, cube root, and all these sorts of functions. But here are just some basic ones, just get you like you know familiar with the fact that there are different types of functions, and they all have different types of graphs. Okay, so let's move on. Now we get to something called domain and range. So these are what tend to like bother a lot of students the most. Like, do what are domain and range like you sort of usually sometimes you just have to memorize this and you'll have to do lots of calculations with it but I'm just gonna sort of tell you what it really is and so the domain it basically says what can you plug into the function so if you had a function like this what are you legally allowed by rules of math to plug into the function for an x value so am I allowed to plug in like 5 like 25 or 62, am I allowed to plug in those numbers? That's what the domain answers. Now, what about the range? The range asks the question, what can you get out of the function? So, if I plugged in whatever numbers, what numbers can I get out of this? So, for example, if I plugged in 25, can I get 28? Like that. Can I get, a, can I get 28? Can I get 96? Can I get 120? These are the questions that the range answers. Okay. Now when you're calculating these two, and you will have to eventually, you need to ask yourself three questions. Can I have a negative number? Can I have a positive number? 
but can I have zero? So in other words, when thinking about what you can plug into x, ask yourself, can I plug in a negative number? Can I plug in a positive number? Or can I plug in zero? When finding the range, can I get a negative number? Can I get a positive number? Can I get zero? Three questions you need to ask yourself, okay? And we're going to just look at a couple of examples in the next slide right here. Okay. So here are some examples. So for example, f of x is equal to x plus 2. So let's find the domain of this. So can I plug in a negative number? Sure, I can. It's It doesn't look, nothing says I can't otherwise. Can I plug in a positive number? Well, of course I can. Uh, if I plugged in 3, nothing would happen. Can I plug in 0? Yes, of course I can. I can plug in 0 if I want to. And so basically, what this means is that the domain of this function is all real numbers. So I can plug in any real number I like, and I can, and this function will still work. Let's talk about the range for a second now. When I, when I, get, an, when I get answers out of this function, can I get a negative answer? Well, sure. If I plugged in negative 20, I would add 2, I get negative 18. So yeah, that, that works fine. Can I get a positive number? Sure, I can. If I plugged in 16, I would get 18. Well, that works. Can I get 0? Well, sure. If I plugged in negative 2, that would get give me 0 for my answer. So the range is also going to be all real numbers. So this is the domain and the range of this function. Now let's look at something just a little bit more tricky. Let's start with the same procedure though. Can I have plug in a negative number? Well, sure. 1 over negative 1 is 1. Negative 1. That works fine. Can I plug in a positive number? Well, sure. 1 over 1 is 1. Can I plug in 0? Now, this is where things get a little bit tough. Does this work? What does this equal? You don't know, right? You can't divide one pizza among zero people. It's undefined. Meaning that we don't yet know how to define this. We can't... We haven't yet managed to sort of apprehend what it means to divide by zero. So we may in the future, we may not. But for now, this is beyond our scope. We don't know what to do when we divide by zero. So therefore, I cannot have zero. This basically means, but can I have a negative and or positive number? Sure. So this basically means all reals except zero. Okay, so I can plug in any number I like, but except zero. Now let's look at the range. This you have to just think a little bit more because there's no easy way to like do algebra and find the range here. So just ask yourself the same questions. Can I get a negative number? as my output. Well, sure, yeah. If I divide 1 by negative 1, I get negative 1. That works. Can I get a positive number? Sure, if I divide 1 by 1, I get a positive 1. Now, can I get 0? Well, I can't divide x by anything that'll get me 0. So, like, I can't plug in 0, obviously, because it's undefined. And I can't plug in any other number that will give me 0. If I plugged in a positive number, I get a positive answer. Plug in a negative, I get a negative answer. So I can't plug in anything that can, will give me 0. So the range will also be set 0. So I can get a positive number, I can get a negative number, but I cannot get 0. So this is how you'd find the domain range. You'll have to do a lot more complicated calculations soon, but we'll, look, we'll save those calculations for another video, okay? Alright, so we're, we've reached the end of this video, so now let's just do a little bit of quick review. So, do you understand what a function is and what it does? Well, yeah, it's basically a relationship. Now, how can we represent functions on graphs? You just get a table of values, and then you plot them over your x and y axis. What the domain range tell us? Well, they tell us what you can plug in, and what you can get out what you can get out of the function so this is basically the essay in essence what we've covered in this video so if you don't understand any of these things I'd recommend you just rewind and go watch again but if you're good 
that's it for this video thanks for watching